Hey everyone! Um, today I'm going to be doing the next part of what has quickly become my most like popular series, and that is the D&D Basic series. So, I'm going to be doing a topic which has, I've touched on before, um, in various aspects, but I haven't really committed to like a, here's some tips on this, and that is an introduction to role-playing. Um, it went over a little bit uh, when I did like the whole voices episode last episode um, But that was more that's a very it's a smaller part of a larger Thing which is how do you role play? How do you get into this? Uh, my games are very role play based um, Other games might be more focused on like mechanics of combat and whatnot, but I definitely try to key into the um, The role playing the interaction between characters the growth of characters and things like that so on, um, the first thing you gotta know is relax, uh, the hardest thing is to, is to get into it. Like, honestly, the hardest part of roleplay is the nerves and kind of, like, feeling embarrassed and, and weird about getting into everything, um, and, like, getting into character and whatnot, um, and that's okay. Like, that's perfectly valid feelings, uh, especially if, like, it's, it's something I run into a lot with, like, groups that are full of newer players because like I run a lot of groups with like people that have all of them who have never played D&D before and it's hard for them to get into it's it's actually some it's somewhat easier if you're playing with some more experienced people um and they're getting into it um and things like that um it's almost hardest though if you're playing with experienced people who don't role play and they're just being awkwardly and like never speaking in character and always metagame whole thing that's really awkward but also not the kind of campaigns I like to play in so I don't I avoid those types of people um, yeah, tip one, avoid, maybe don't be in groups with people that really don't match your overall, uh, gameplay style. Don't play mechanics-heavy games if you want to roleplay. But, um, yeah. So, I've mentioned this in the, uh, Briefly in the Voices video, which was not ASMR, so not everyone may have listened to it. But, um, essentially it is talking about, uh, the, the difference between out-of-character and in character talking. Um, because like out of character talking is like talking like between people as who you are. Um, so things like if you're like asking like, okay, like, oh what's what's your like attack bonuses and stuff, like what's that's all that, that is like out of character talk. Like when your DM is describing the, the layout of the room for you, that's out of character talk. Um as opposed to in character talk where you are talking as your character within the campaign. So I might be like, okay, I'm gonna roll for uh, diplomacy, and then, like, and that's like the outer character rising, but then, then I'll follow up being like, oh yes, kind sirs, I shall now, I wish to beseech you to let us pass on this wonderful bridge you have, and please do not eat us. Um, so there's this, um, switch between in character and out of character, um, and making that distinction, like, through things like voices and stuff, and, like, shifts and mannerism, um, that's more for the voices episode where I'm talking about there, but, um, a lot of what I'm, what we talk about when we talk about role-playing is more the in-character stuff, um, uh, but speaking about the divide, um, there's also, I've mentioned this before, but might as well go over it again, um, I don't remember what I've talked about, um, one thing to, to keep in mind is the difference between in-character and out-of-character knowledge. Where out-of-character, you know a lot of things that you may not know as a character. And it's important not to let those divide, like, mingle too much if you can. Um, like, some will seep over regardless, but yeah. Like, if if your character, like, if, if you, like, you might know, um... The classic, like, hard example is, like, when you know a monster's mechanics exactly, but there's no way, um, your character would know them, like, uh, it's like, do you play around them if your character knows nothing about these mechanics, like, um, that's actually, that's actually a good debate one, as far as there, it's like, in combat, are you playing as your character, or are you playing, there's a lot of things going on, um, but, like, say, like, out of character, you, you, um, you heard interaction between, like, the DM and one of the other players, and they had, like, a conversation where one of the players was revealed to, uh, their, their brother was secretly this cultist, and, but, um, their player is trying to cover it up, um, 
it wouldn't make sense for your character then who did not you the character did not hear this conversation at all even though you did shouldn't be automatically suspicious all of a sudden of their brother for no other reason besides oh i have a hunch yeah hunch um and another thing is like, a lot of people will like do that and then like try to justify reasons for like why they know this and just kind of try to avoid it. Um, one way I do this with like a lot of my players is that if I'm having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I will have that conversation out of the room. Um, although that's more for the DM series that I'm talking about and like how to handle those things. But it's important to keep those things distinct even though it's not about role-playing. So actually talking about role-playing. Um, so, at its core, D and D role playing is essentially a very structured form of long, of long form improv. Um, if you have improv or any acting experience at all, it does give you benefit, but it's by no means a requirement. Um, but because it is essentially long form improv, um, you can actually take a lot of the like rules and tips from improv and bring it into here, um, like. You do have a few crutches to lean on. One is, um, uh, words that mean things. You know generally, like, already, like, the scene and everything and what's going on, and you have someone giving you back context for everything that you're doing, so you don't have to make up everything on the fly. But, um, I mean, if you just go back to, like, the famous first rule of improv, which is the yes and rule, um, where you don't, if, if one of the other players says or does something, like, unless it is in character for you, maybe like, no, you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't kick that child. We shouldn't kick this child. I'm not making this up. This is something, a conversation that's happened in one of my games, because, I don't know, they decided to kick a child's face, and my players, <sighs> yeah, so, um, but yeah, so, um, but the thing is, is, what was I talking about? I've just completely lost my thought. Uh, running back. Um, but, oh yeah, first of all, improv. Essentially, don't, don't try to overwrite what other people establish. Like, uh, don't, don't try to police other people's actions and what they do. Um, try to build on scenes. Um, uh, and, and... Yeah, so, so work with the other players. Um, don't tell other players what they are doing. Um, because you don't, don't try to impose how you believe the other players should act. You should only be worrying about how you act. Um, I mean, that also goes for DMs. Like, don't try to tell your characters what they feel or, or necessarily what they do. Um, how to handle, like, mind affecting influencing effects is another topic, but not for this one. Um, wherever it's, it's focus on what your, your character is doing. And, uh, one thing I mentioned, uh, that really helps, uh, just getting started with role-playing is, uh, I mentioned this in the green character thing, is to have just at least, like, one personality quirk about your character. Like, one thing that you can go to. Like, always, like, uh, like, just being like kind of like belligerent, like wanting to pick a fight, like the like a a need to uh, express your devotion to your deity and whatnot, or like constantly trying to convert people. Um, like that's a good personality quirk. Like I had one character where the player wasn't uh, the best at role playing, but um, uh, they they had a uh, um, they were still pretty new to the game, but, like, they, they're, 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 they had a strong character in terms of based on the fact that they were memorable because the first thing they tried to do whenever they met anyone was try to convert them to the god of chaos, um, and, like, darkness and dark treachery and whatnot, and, um, that's what they did. They were like, oh, so we, well, good sir, I see you're trying to sell me something, and I will, I will buy it later, but later, but... Have you decided, have you heard of the good word of Kel, the dark mistress of secrets and corruption? You should totally follow her, yeah. Um, and that kind of like was a nice springboard for having conversations. Um, also just like general, like, like, on a, as a DM, the ideal, uh, like, role play, like, situations are between players and like getting that like good player relationship um or i should say between the players characters um so like 
figuring out your relationship with the other characters is very important. Like, uh, you might have, like, you might be good friends with, like, all of them or most of them, and or you might be actually kind of suspicious of one, and that, like, changes how you interact with that person. Um, the important thing to do, though, for role-playing is, is relax. Is that well, I say don't say no to what other people do, like, if, if you, like, do or say something and, like, want to roll it back, like, take back the last thing you said, don't worry about it. It's not, it's not like this is a published thing in front of, like, a stage of people, like, actual improv. Um, it's a very relaxed, it's supposed to be fun. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's the thing. Um, one thing I should know is that keep, while well, they can be funny once in a while, keep, like, saying clearly out of character statements in character, just being, like, just try to maintain that divide, um, like, it can be funny once in a while as a joke, but it really gets old, and it isn't as funny as you think it is when, when you're, like, referencing in-game mechanics as a character, it isn't that funny, it, it gets quite old, okay, maybe it's just because I've been playing for a while, but it, it isn't that funny, just stop it, but, um, yeah, so, um, where does that mean things? Uh, kind of like, whenever you're going into an interaction, um, or I mean, honestly, whenever you're doing anything at all, um, you sh as a character, you have probably, have, like, if you've built your character or you fleshed them out, you probably know the character's ambitions, what they want, like, what they value. Um, and that can, uh, and whenever you're going into a scene, um, like, I think it's useful to, to, well, it doesn't actually flow like that in practice a lot of ways. Like, you can divide up, like, when you're looking at a part of it as a scene. Um, and one thing you do when you go into a scene, whether it be D&D or improv or anything, is that your character needs to have a goal. What is your objective in this point? Um, like, one easy one is, like, if you're going to a shop and you're trying to you're an, and your goal is to negotiate to get that sword for as cheap as you can. And that is my goal. Um, and that influences how you play out that scene. Um, or if you're, you're appearing before the king to try to uh, get aid for your, your humble village out who was being, uh, besieged by orcs. Um, that gives you a very specific goal and determines how you act. Um, it's also one of those things where you won't know your entire character's personality until, um, until you, like, get a- you play him a few times and you get a grasp on who your character is. Um, uh, and that's okay. Uh, also don't feel the need to always make every single character be totally unique and nuanced. Um, playing, like, simplified characters makes them memorable. Playing, like, kind of, like, classic archetypes is- Honestly, they're classic for a reason. Um, like, if you just want to play, like, the straightforward, gruff dwarf and fighter who, who, uh, just is wants to, wants to, looking for a fight and, uh, maybe, uh, get some gold, like, that is a totally valid personality and person to play for role play. Especially if you're, like, an early, like, a, a, um, new to role playing in D&D in general, it's honestly a really good idea to play what is otherwise, like, a very simple character or a character that you're very familiar with. Like, if you read a bunch of, um, like, say, say you're really into, like, mystery novels and whatnot, and if you're playing, like, play, like, an investigator-like character, because, like, you know, you'll know how they act, and that's a, a space you're comfortable with. Um, you don't need to go out of your comfort zone right away, especially with D&D. This isn't about pushing your artistic limits, this is about having fun. Um, I mean, like, some people have fun pushing their artistic limits. You probably should not be doing that for your first character. Oftentimes, push making, role playing your first character is pushing your artistic limits. You don't need to make a a character with a story arc worthy, worthy of a Pulitzer on your first campaign, or really any campaign, because, I mean, it's it's not it's sad but true that like, honestly, most of your ideas for your character probably won't come to flourishing, like. If you're, like, looking for, like, a heavy character-driven narrative about your character, um, write a book. Um, that isn't what D&D is for. Um, that's not to say you can't have character progression, but don't plan out everything ahead of time. Um, let it happen naturally, and just let it flow, and, um, D&D largely is, is, 
a story about a group rather than necessarily the individuals in the group. Yeah, the individuals have like the threads and stuff, but the main story that's the focus is the story of the group. Um, with all that in mind, uh, just a few things that can help um, uh, with, with rolling is that if you like come to a situation where like there's like awkward science and nothing's happening, uh, maybe it's time to move. Like um, a good DM will kick a pick up on uh, like a lull in um in like the dialogue and stuff, especially between characters and and put certain some action or suggest like, okay, or do we want to sleep now and move on to the next day and continue traveling? Um and ending but also just like uh moving locations can really help. Like if you don't know what to do, okay, like what is the next point in your journey? Like what is the next goal to your overarching goal? Like um, like, like, when there's a lull, like, just, like, pretend it's a video game, open up your quest log, and, like, just figure out what you want to clear out next, because, um, like, you, you, you should always be working towards something, um, and if you just don't know what to do, uh, either it's a poorly made campaign, or, or, uh, or does that mean things? I was going with that, but yeah, no, just try to try to change the scene if if a scene's worn out, um, or try to like don't don't force a lot of like in depth like heartfelt conversations and whatnot. Um, let them come naturally, cut them stem from other stimulus uh, stimuli, and uh, come from events and such. Uh, honestly, a lot of what role playing. Uh, comes down to is just getting comfortable with the people you're with you're with honestly what a lot of role playing just comes down to is finding a group that you're comfortable with um it, it's just once you get into that rhythm of uh everything in the group like y you don't need to be just like a perfect like actress about it you don't need to be phenomenal about like hitting every beat and like you really getting some motion every scene. It's it's honestly just finding that like connection with the other players and just having fun. Um I think a lot of people stress the the importance of like being a phenomenal role player and that's that's what makes it and like a lot of people will compare themselves to things like uh like pod D, &D podcasts that they listen to, like Critical Role, Adventure Zone, things like that. But don't compare yourself to those dreams because a lot of those are done by professional actors and professional like personalities and whatnot who like that's their job to do it and you're not going to be happy with your results if you compare yourself to things like that them and it's it's really it's really about just kind of like exploring the space of a character exploring being someone other than yourself and that's kind of really what's makes dandy a lot of fun where it, it allows this space that, like, even, like, acting, um, and, like, I, I don't, haven't done it in years, but, like, I loved acting. It, d, d fills that space that, like, that doesn't necessarily give, um, and because it's, it's comfortable, it's, it's small, it's secure, and you can explore these other spaces and other, uh, uh other people, um, and honestly just have fun with a group of friends, uh, and honestly, that's why I, like, really don't recommend, especially for, like, first-time players, like, playing, like, a lot of, like, at, like, the game store groups and whatnot, because you just can't get that, like, com comfortableness and familiarity with the other players. It's, like, it's, it's one thing to, like, have a very, like, fun, like, tech, like, very serious, like, technical-based game, like, in the back of a comic book store and things like that. But it's another just to be in your basement with your friends eating pizza and role playing about how much you'd like to fuck an orc. Like, that is. That is like. That is the beauty of Dungeons and Dragons as as a, a medium for that sort of expression. And there there is no strictly wrong way to role play. I mean, there's wrong things you can do by, like, overshadowing other people and dominating every single scene and, uh, ruining everyone's time, but 
apart from like dressed things like that like you know what like especially when you're doing it early on you're gonna suck it's just like any other form of art you're gonna suck really bad when you start okay maybe not really bad some people have a knack for it and like pick it up quickly but like you're no not gonna be as good as you can be when you first started and for all the tips that i can give you and all kind of like the pointers the best thing is to do is just do it and and try like the best thing to do like if you want to learn how to draw draw like yeah you can read like look up tutorials but like oh here's the specifics like here's like tips for drawing hands and eyes and things like that but the core to that is just do it draw like get that experience um like green said like well, of course like if you have any like specific questions about things like this like or situations on how to handle them like feel free to let me know and i can answer them and whatnot but um yeah, no, the, um, words that mean things. Talking's hard. But you just gotta find a group and have fun with it. Um, and, like, I mean, that's, it, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. Um, finding a group is notoriously hard. Um, but, especially for a first group. But it's one of those things where you really cannot appreciate fully until you do it. Uh. It's, it's, you can kind of get the experience, like, by listening to other people's groups and things like that, but it, it really isn't the same as sitting there and doing it yourself. And that's really the beauty of it, and I just love it so much. Um, so, yeah, I hope you got like, at least some pointers about, like, uh, role-playing and D&D, but really it comes down to just practice and finding how you do it and how, how you get into that zone, and how you, uh, get it all together. Um, yeah. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have a wonderful night's sleep.